Leather gloves, the slapping in hands, popcorn and peanuts, we are work in the stands, pink cut candy, leather and a stick, he's chasing the beer, the trick of the lips, play ball, play ball, roll at the bases and smack it right over the wall, play ball. You don't get into it at all. Just play. turn your sound like off. Fonzie. I'm not, hey, I'm not like Fonzie. Turn your sound off. I don't know how. Yeah, but you noticed it, so that. I did. Shows because I'm a I was I'm watching. Is that your sound or somebody else? I was watching you. I said, uh, I'm, an, I'm anti-establishment, John. I know that. But you, you know what it is? You, you're very cool. You're like Fonzie. Like I said, you wouldn't go live. Fonzie think, wouldn't do live. Let's have, not, let's wait not, a minute. Might let's not go that. He's not really Fonzie. Am I the Fonzie cool. of '74? He did this. He just did this. Steve Lee. Am I the Fonzie of '74? The reverse mortgage Fonzie. <laughs> the reverse mortgage Fonzie. Um, Strong Island TV. More like Potsy. Looks Paradise like. Studios here in Massapequa, New York, right alongside the beautiful Long Island Railroad. Tonight we have Pat Marone on. How you doing? How you doing? And Steve Oliva. So glad to be here. Always a pleasure to be with these fine gentlemen. <coughs> um, we have a special show tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about autism. We have four guests. We have Greg. His last name is? Fast to check. Fast to check. Uh, I knew that. I, I know this by heart. <laughs> Bonnie Scalisi and her two sons, Brandon and Josh. I remember their names. So um, an important topic. And listen, we're no experts here on anything. Uh, especially autism. The idea of the night is just to touch on it, um, bring them out. They're going to talk a little bit about what they do with autism, and hopefully we'll touch a few people out there to understand what it's like um, to be in that arena, let's say, all right? I'm actually an expert on something. What is that? Uh, sleeping till 2 in the afternoon and still feeling productive. Steve is an expert on something. I am an expert on getting up early and getting nothing done by 2 in the afternoon, but I'm up early. But I'm up is, early. That, is that the hat you were too cheap to buy at the stadium? That this is the $40 hat that I refused to buy, and then I decided to buy it, and John Santo already bought it for me at the Met game. How much that did you pay man, for that? $4? 40 That is a man who wants gigs. It almost looks like a bicentennial cap, the way you got it set up. I like it. I like it. So let's talk a little bit about Friday night. Friday night. Where were we Friday night? We were at Hewlett, and we were at um, Williston Park. You ran the Williston Park show. Yes, yes, fun show. Heard it was a fun show. Yes. Everybody did well. We had uh, we had one of the newer comics on Long Island on, Megan Friend. Yes, she did a great job. And I heard she did a really good job. They all did, they all did great. They yeah, did. but I'm saying I love when we can use uh, one of the newer comics. Yeah, she, she was. She and was, blend them into a nice show. She had a nice know? time. She had a great set. She really Cause, did. Because these, and Bonnie will talk, oh, I won't talk to Bonnie about this today, but. You're out there working the open mics all the time and doing that. It's nice when you get in front of 250 people right? and you really throw your material Too bad out. she didn't get in front of 250 people, but, you know, it's nice, though. I'm trying to make the show sound bigger oh. than it was. <laughs> Just go along with it. I'm like being like Donald Trump here. Oh, 250 people there, but there were 50 there. Well, how many people? 150. Yeah, I bet about that. Yeah, it's a nice time. They're great. People over the Williston Park Fire, a great, great bunch of people over there. Uh, can I ask you a five-minute question? What did you have to eat over there? I didn't really eat nothing. I picked. No, no. I, what did they have to <laughs> eat? I don't know. I think they had baked ziti. They had chicken wings. I seen. Uh, you uh, didn't peruse. I looked a little bit, but I couldn't see it. It was dark. But uh, I seen Keegan was eating uh, every chicken wings. Uh, no, not everything. He was doing yeah. good. You know, he's uh, uh, and uh, JJ and them. I saw they had chicken wings. They had baked ziti, and they yeah, uh, they, they, have, they usually have a few things. Yeah, they had a nice up. thing. They had the bread. Well, dress as a med coach. What'd you have? Sunflower seeds and bubble gum. Yes, yes, I did. You didn't eat. I we, said, always eat I didn't eat in the show. beginning. I picked on a couple of chicken wings. Oh, okay. That's you know? nice. Yeah. And then we went over to... I met you guys at the diner mm -hmm. later on. That's right. That's right. And, you, and, you and I had a cheeseburger. You certainly made up for it. Yes. And, and rice well, pudding. You made us have the rice pudding. Oh, yeah. 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 It was delicious. Was that good? That was good, yeah. It was good. Yeah. Then we had the uh, Hewlett Fire Department. The first year we did a show for Hewlett, uh, Chief from the FDNY, Chief Matt Nelson, who I worked with, when I was a probie in lot of 12, Maddie's now a chief, and I was still a firefighter. Uh, let's not go there. But Maddie, um, 
Somebody took their career seriously. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And Matt ran the show, and I said to him, Matt, why do you keep you? looking at the screen at yourself? For? I I just like the hat. The way I'm looking tonight, I'm really enjoying the whole hat and and shirt thing. I think I'm looking pretty. You be look like a nut. You're just looking up in the air. Look, uh, what do you want me to look at the camera? I'll look at the camera. All right. You don't have to, but just be. I want you to I relax. Make sure there's nothing else I want going you. On. I want you to relax because I'm looking at you, looking up at the sky. I want to make sure that I'm doing what I what I think I'm doing in my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. <laughs> so um, I said to Matt, where are you donating the money for the event? And he goes, Johnny, we're going to give it to Laugh to Save Lives. That's a first. Yeah. And you know what that told me? I'm waiting for you guys to jump in with some wise-ass comment. You know what that told me? His accountant called him the day before. No. What that told me is that people are noticing some of the nice things we're doing, and they're saying, hey, that is a charity we want to donate money to. And that was... I was Dome, really, dome money? Don't. Don't is, is a half a donation. <laughs> I didn't know what it is. Like, like, you, you you had, I want to donate $40, <laughs> dollars, but you only don't. I, I, think it's, I think it's a tremendous what they, what they did for you. Uh, oh, Matt. I, no, I, it really tremendous. was. Nice job. Because that, what that helps to do is uh, for the for the veterans, veteran shows and stuff they like that. They didn't have to, and they did. Nice people. That's ah, fantastic. No, shows they, a lot of class. A lot of we class. could have just paid the comics, and they could have took the extra money and put it towards anything they wanted. Yeah. Any that, charity that, they wanted. That was terrific. It was. And so that was our Friday Laugh to Save Lives show. On Saturday, I drove for a Brad Axelrod Treehouse Comedy Productions gig. Three hours there, three hours back. Hour show, seven hour evening. Um, nice audience, Catholic school, right up my alley. Mm -hmm. clean, hey, John clean. Santos watching. I'm supposed to be here. Joe, where's Santa? What do you mean he's, he's watching? He's supposed to be here. He's watching. Ah, we got some what a mama look. Ah. So that was, that was my Saturday. Sunday... Laughter Saves Lives was back at St. Albans Veterans Hospital. As I always say, the show I'm most proud of, Teddy Smith came out. And I, I'm always amazed how experienced, strong comics get a little nervous because you know you're not going to get a lot of laughs back from these guys. Plus, what am I going to say? You know, how, how am I going to handle this? Like you're used to that, so you don't get like, I'm nervous. I'm used to getting no yeah, laughs. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could think of what I got to buy tomorrow at Home Depot. I feel that time where the laughs usually are after a joke. You know what I'm saying? I feel it with, with good stuff. You have a very um, thank you, Steve. Professional way of filling filling silence. Filling silence when it's needed. <laughs> with it's experience. Uh, with a self-deprecating uh, kind of humor. Yes, it's experience. It's experience. Yeah. So, Teddy Smith. First, we had uh, now let me remember everybody's name. Helen Wood came down and Debbie Baza. Baza. The Baza. Um, wonderful people. Helen is trying to get us some publicity. She doesn't have to do that. She called newspapers. We're probably going to get New York One to come down to the next show. I told Helen she's, you're coming back. She, she's very nice. She comes very and does the reading see on Mondays. <laughs> sweet lady. Yeah. Debbie did a nice job. But then Teddy went up there, and Teddy was Teddy. It wasn't like he went up there and he goes, oh, these guys aren't going to laugh. Half of them are sleeping. I'll just mail it in and get out of here. He did his whole expression. <laughs> hey, he's a pro. He's a him. pro. He's I'm sorry, I got a little pro, bit of a Teddy. thing going on here. And I'm sure he had them all laughing. He did. He did. And the staff was laughing, and they loved him, and he did a great job. And they appreciate that over there. They've yes. got one, one crew that really appreciates that. Why, yes. is, why is your coffee cup named after a, uh, a fictional character? Uh, it's a Yeti. It's actually my wife's coffee cup. Oh, I, ha I, I love it, then. I love it. I was supposed to have Wonderful an endoscopy today. Oh, yeah, we've been hearing um, about this for the last six months. Well, I was supposed to have an endoscopy. I asked for a... Oh, you're going to ram this down our throats now? I, <laughs> I asked for a colonoscopy. Anybody on that one? And an endoscopy. Don't, We're not don't, don't roll over that joke. That wasn't bad. That was a good one. No, I didn't roll over it. I, I let it flow. You're a pro. You don't want me to stop and point no, that out. No, thank you. It was a good joke. Thanks very much. Um, And I had this thing going on. I think it's the allergies. I thought it was a call. I called the... Office, I spoke to the um, anesthesiologist, and they said, you know what, let's reschedule. You sound terrible, and so I came to get you guys sick. Why are you the allergies right? have been bad this year. Huh? I've been losing my voice. Oh, the allergies are yeah, terrible. Yeah, excuse me. Are we doing MCN duck cleaning today? We always do MCN duck cleaning. And when we cleaning. get to MCN duck cleaning yes. uh, commercial, yeah. talk about the time of year. Yes. Allergies are terrible. Yes, and keep going because I don't know where you're going with this. Well, when we get to it, yeah, it's going to make perfect sense. Okay, we we'll need Matt. We need Matt. 
We so need let's the get commercial back. to be fixed. That finished. <laughs> That's what we do need. So let's get back. Maddie is a great guy. MCM duck cleaning. We'll do the commercial later, but use them to clean your ducks. And they also sterilize ambulances. Um, I wanted to talk about. Couldn't you stand on your head and get the uh, colonoscopy instead? No. No. no, you don't. You don't. When you get the colonoscopy, you know what position you're in when you get that. I do. How would you know that? Because you're out. Or did you watch? A because they put you in that position before they give it you out. No, they do not. They put you sideways. It's called YouTube, no. buddy. I woke up and I was rolling. I got to do something on Saturday. Well, that was a different colonoscopy. That's where you were. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Olivia saves lives. You were at Patty G's house. That's what. <laughs> Why does Patty G have to be? He's not here. The man can't be here to defend himself. So you didn't get the endos endos endoscopy, right? No, I rescheduled for a week. You see, they call it an endoscopy. They use going in here, right? Yeah, they, they use the endoscopy. An endoscopy. The they usually give yeah, you, that makes sense. They give you both of them at the. I had mine last you know, two years ago. They did them at the same time. I've never had an endoscopy. Different actually, hoses, but they did. They, I actually they did heard. You, I heard your doctor got treated for PTSD. After yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> um. I've had colonoscopies four times because I have history in my family. My of mom, my mom had colon uh, col uh, colon colon cancer. Colonoscopies, yeah. My mom had colon cancer. My dad had prostate cancer. So I get. Um, in fact, you examined me for the prostate cancer about two weeks ago. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, so I was. Yeah, in, that's that was that. in Florida. I did that. Paul is getting the endoscopy, and the colonoscopy uh, Friday, Thursday, Friday. We did. The family's really week. into this. Good times. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. times. It's it's colonoscopy week. Um, Olivia came home from Binghamton, picked her up Wednesday. Nice, nice. That was some freaking trip. I'm she sure didn't get a colonoscopy, did she? On the way? No. <laughs> because no. Now you're really taking it too far now. But the bear did. Did you see the bear? No. What do you mean, no? You stalk Facebook. I know you're not on, but you stalk no, it. You didn't see the bear? Uh, I don't. No, I, I saw the bear. I she saw has the bear. a bear the size of bigger than us. Oh, really? That her boyfriend bought her in the middle of the semester. Nobody's thinking about it. now. This bear has to come home in the car. Mm. So thank God my father, who was up in the Poconos with my sister, came up because they never saw the campus. And little did he know, the bear rode him with it, uh, back with him. Really? In the HOV Why didn't lane. You strap it to HOV the, lane they went. Why didn't you strap it to the roof so you can horrify people next to you on the way Because home? I did have stuff strapped to the roof. Hmm. I bought that big bag and everything. So that was that. Um, she's studying environmental science. Wasn't your daughter's boyfriend, was it? That, no. That kid deserves to be in the car. He had a CPAP machine type. Why would you get her a big bear? Why didn't you get her a little goldfish like you get at the carnivals? Like that know. lasts like three days. I don't know. They didn't think this out. They really didn't think this out. So Olivia saves lives. She's studying uh, environmental sciences, as you guys know. Mm -hmm. And her tip of the night, compost. She wants us. Now, what are we, what's some of the tips we had before? Let's go over them. See if you were listening to me at all. We had what? Give me one. Just give me freaking one. Tell me you Plastic were bags or something? Yeah, plastic, plastic bottles. Plastic bottles. Don't use plastic bottles. Not the ones don't I'm use using it. right now. Right. Straws. What you <laughs> Straws. In fact, I just heard, I just heard that uh, what's the big expensive uh, Whole Foods not using plastic straws anymore? They're chickens. They're ready-made chickens. are going in They're bags. They're not using now. plastic chickens anymore? No plastic chickens. I thought they, what, they switched the rubber? And their bag's gonna be small. I, I Didn't they find like? A, I tried to get that. Uh, they out. autopsied a whale and they found like 250 pounds of plastic bags in its stomach. That's terrible. Yeah. There you go. And I was, you know, I was trying they, to get some well, good points out there. They autopsied that. They're gonna find 250 meatballs, which is crazy. Yeah. We well, have a shark in the waters. That didn't go good. We have a shark. I watched Jaws last night. That was you on did? TV. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of sharks, he was saying there's sharks in the water. We have shark in the water. Yeah, don't you? Uh, just for composting a few things. Oh, yeah, what, what I, happened I with the compost? Things. Yeah. Uh, green materials, we use banana peels and apples and eggshells. and no, but what is wrong with the compost? The cane pumpkins. It's good for fertilizer and stuff. Yes. And you're not wasting stuff, you know? Yeah, I've, I have pumpkins laying around. I could co compost them. I always them. use them. For All right. John, that's farm stuff. I'm, com I'm from Queens, so I don't... Uh... You could compost in Queens. What am, where am I going to keep compost? You live in Long Island now. But where am I going to keep compost? We got a, you know those big beer things, the things you put beer yeah, in with ice? Yeah. Olivia took that, drilled holes in it, and she started composting today. Not doing it. All right. Olivia, I hope you're not watching. Because it smells, happy. and you got to keep it I in the house. I think it's great door. with Olivia. You don't have to keep it in the house. I'm germphobic. Composting is a very dirty habit. Stevie. But it's good for the environment. Olivia, you're doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Steve. Yes. Here's some sharks around Long Island. He was watching it. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the sharks? Steve? Talk about it. Uh, wow. Yeah, you have anything prepared on that? Of course Folks. He does. Of course he does. Isn't that folks. Me? Summer's here. 
He watched Jaws yesterday. Yes. What's one of the scariest things you can see in a beach? And I'm not talking about Pat surfing in a Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going there. You <laughs> beat me to that one. What's the wor What's one of the scariest things? We all watched... Uh, Patty G in the nude beach. Patty D doing naked jumping jacks is also uh, a possibility. <laughs> all these things are terrifying. But what you could also see or hear of, we all of age watch Jaws at a certain time. We all maybe uh, younger younger generation might have watched it with your families. Hey, check out this cool movie, and then they never want to go in the water again. There was a shark sighting. Holy crap! Um, <laughs> off of a ten foot great white shark, uh, off Western. of the Hamptons. It was initially in Greenwich, Long Island Sound, which covers both sides. Right. Uh, it was detected Monday off the Hamptons. It actually left after uh, Alec Baldwin punched in the nose. Uh, they argued over a parking space. But uh, that's something else. Nothing? All right. Nothing. Um, it was spotted uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, then in the Hamptons. Uh, it was up in Canada. They left it. It actually went up to Canada after. Uh, now, who's following the shark around? Well, what they do is the shark, this particular shark. Somebody in a boat? This Santos on it now. That's name, why he's not here. Well, this shark's name is Cabot. There's particularly shark, and right. they, they uh, put a transmitter oh, on it. Oh, I thought somebody And you can go Dick online Cabot? and track all these. No, it was named after shark uh, Cabot. Henry Cabot. They named him after the wine, I think. <laughs> Something. So uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, they spotted him around here, and usually they say that um, we don't have a, uh, it's not that common. They said it was more out of curiosity. Um, curiosity might kill the swimmer in this particular case mm -hmm. instead of the cat, but they said usually it's, uh, they have these uh, small, like, sand sharks, uh, that come in a, li in a little more uh, shallow waters. So you want the good news or the bad news? Uh, let's, let's get the good news first. All right, the good news. According to the University of Florida International Shark Attack File, okay, in 2018, there was 130 human shark interactions, not, in count, not counting those uh, where there people met sharks. You on know what the, I always uh, say to Santa, right? Datingshark.com. What's that? And you know what I always say to Santa? What? Right? Is this going to get funny? It'll get funny. Okay. Give me a time. I'm just asking. All right. 66 unprovoked shark attacks. 34 provoked mm -hmm. shark attacks. 30 uh, other attacks, not including <laughs> verbal attacks on Facebook. Um, <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I'm coughing, I'm not laughing, just so you know. <laughs> Only one of us In 2018, there were five <laughs> fatal shark attacks. 2018. All right. Uh, one of them was in, uh, in the United <coughs> States. Uh, 16. Uh, <laughs> you, know where the mo you know where there were the most incidents of biting? <laughs> Tell us. In Florida. Yeah. But that was, uh, the that was the locals with the cops on live PD. That was something different. But, uh, no, in Florida, there were 16 bites. Uh, those were... Um, there's nothing else written on No, the there place. is stuff written, all right? Uh, I all right, noticed when you raise your voice, doesn't mean that it gets funnier. No. I'm just saying. All right. Oh, shit. Let me get uh, to what I was going to say. You, uh, is the close? No. Why don't you tell us about your psychologist? <laughs> With the water pistol. Oh, shut up. Don't, <laughs> don't try to fake the fans out by saying you didn't eat before a show. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. All right. Provoked uh, attacks are <laughs> attacks where... Um, Humans may be trying to take, uh, are in the shark's area, they may be trying to take them out of a net. We're antagonizing shark like Pat's doing to me. Unprovoked shark attacks <laughs> or, or uh, when someone is surfing or uh, when Pat is, uh, is body surfing. Uh, Would it be antagonizing if I took that book away right now? No, because I have more so to say, but I'm being, slower. all right. Um, Sharks can travel 100 to 150 miles a day. No. Uh, less with Hamptons traffic. <laughs> but I wait a minute. And that's all. All right, guys, Very listen. Good. Here's that the bottom. Here's the bottom line. All right. Most of the shark don't attacks. Don't go in the water. Don't go in the water. <laughs> most of the shark attacks are in Florida. Uh, most of the sharks that are closer into shore near us are like those sand sharks. They ain't gonna bother you. All right. Um, very One, good. And uh, that's about it. That, don't don't provoke a shark. That was, a, and, uh, that was a great segment. If yeah. you happen to uh, run into a shark, make sure <laughs> make sure you have your endoscopy scheduled. Patty G, where's Patty G? Yeah, that that's, was, listen, that, that's listen, listen, doing that, Steve. Listen, that would have been a pretty good bit if <laughs> if, if uh, Bob Apodaca <laughs> wasn't freaking laughing like a jackass throughout this whole segment. Let's, all right, let's go.
two life packs. So Let's if you happen, and I hope this doesn't happen, if you happen to get, if you happen to get nipped by a shark, I hope it doesn't nip, meaning I'm a little pinch, so you have a good story in the bar, and you didn't pay attention to uh, some of my facts. It's not my fault, all right? It's the clown in the Mets regalia who hasn't played baseball since 1972. Let's go to life facts. Please listen. This is a life fact. It's easy to use and can save a life in an airway emergency. Life fact is proven to save lives, and it's as simple as place, push, pull. I've had one in my kitchen and one in my car for years, and you should have one in yours. Choking is a leading cause of death. 5,000 people a year die from choking, one child every five days, and it can happen in just four minutes. There's no time to wait. If you have children in your home, please consider your life back today. Hey, we're back from life back. Uh, this life back continues to be picked up by schools. Um, get one in your home. They life backed a shark recently. And they pulled out uh, 100 pounds of plastic bags. Right, let's, get, let's get centered. We have to move a little here. Which way? To the to the, your right. Well, shouldn't it be? Well, you told me to go this way. Right, let's see. Which, no, Greg, to my left, way. to your left. I'm left. Using, it's opposite over here. It's opposite. That's good. What, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. I can't see because we're not moving it. It's delayed. All right. There there we we go, we look now we All right. Now so, Greg. Where's Greg? I, I apologize. Pronounce your last name again. I don't want to screw it up. You can give it a shot there. It's easy. A. Faster check? You got it. There it is. Steve's got it on. Say it again. Thank you. Faster check. Very nice. I know it because uh, when, I, when I'm out to eat, uh, I, he's known as pass a check. Pass a check. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easy to remember. Very good. Um, we did a show. I, I just realized for John Butier, we did a show in Queens. When you walked in the door, you said, John, you were on that show. Yeah. Uh, and that was a fun night. Yeah, we did it at the it Moose It was fun Lodge. for you. It wasn't fun for him. Watch him ask <laughs> that. Yeah. No, I was. That was a great evening. Nice evening. <laughs> you got to sit through your act. So um, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with what you do. You run a, we're going to call it an organization or a? It's an organization called Play for Autism. Play for Autism. So how did you get involved with that? Uh, well, what you was know, your stimulation? Well, the big thing was back, you know, back in 2011, we had the NBA was on strike. The NBA was on strike? Yeah. Okay. So a friend of mine, we decided to do a charity basketball game out here on the island at Nassau Coliseum and kind of got screwed because the players went back. And then I figured, oh, you know what, shoot. you know, take some time off of life for a change and right. uh, decided on Christmas Day of 2011 to start an organization for children and adults on the autism spectrum. But sports just programs. no Canada. relatives? Well, my nephew, Brandon, he's 18 now. <clears throat> he's on the spectrum and that was part of it. But in my past, I've always worked, you know, during my career playing hockey overseas, I always worked with special okay. needs kids. Okay. Could you define what you mean by he's on the spectrum? What is well, that he's, he's mean? diagnosed. I'm not, I'm not an ABA therapist. I know that. Yeah, I know that. I mean, if I, I was, I wouldn't be sitting here if I'd be right. sitting in an office. But oh, he, he, I apologize. I'd rather be here I apologize. Anyway. Yeah, he wouldn't John, be sitting John, with us. I apologize. Sure. John's on the spectrum. <clears throat> yeah. It's, you know, there's different levels. You know, you got Asperger's. It's, you know, okay. And, you know, and then you have kids that, you know, there's sensory issues involved. Uh, you know, communication issues, uh, social skills issues, uh, like my nephew, for example. You know, you wouldn't really know that he's autistic, but, you know, he's got sensory. Like, if he's, you know, around loud noises, he could, you know, kind of shy away. He's not good in, you know, large crowds. Right. But a lot of kids that we work with, you know, they have, you know, some kids are nonverbal. Different level. There's yeah, different, there's all different levels. Level. But the kids, they're, you know, like when they say special, the kids are special. I mean, yeah. You know, everybody. You know, everybody says what's what's normal. I don't think anybody's normal out there today. You, no. know, you look at anybody's out there. I mean, everybody's got their Just own characteristic. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you know, look at this group sitting here tonight. <laughs> oh, please it's, don't it's look at great, this group. Yeah, but it's you know, but we all sure. have different things. I mean, yeah. Growing up, I didn't know what autism was. You know, we treated you know, and it's a big thing with bullying these days. Yeah. You know, I had a good close friend, of, you know, the family that his brother was autistic. You know, I found out later. But you know, we you know, we he was mentally challenged. You yeah. know, back in the days kids back in the days we used to use bad words for that <clears throat> because we were kids. But you know, this kid, you know, he's fully functional. You know, he owns I a business. Think though, these other, days, yeah, kids are cruel. Yeah. We were a kid, right? When we were a kid, <clears throat> those kids weren't explained as well to us, I don't think, than today. You, you know what I'm saying? I agree. Years ago, I agree, it was yeah. just like, oh, you make fun of them. Not not me. I'm just saying in general. A lot of things in life weren't explained to us years ago when you were a kid. We made right. fun of everybody when you're right. a kid. You're a kid, you make fun of everybody. Right. Well, the big thing now is about awareness. So, you know, yeah. the awareness is there. You know, people understand it. And it's, you know, you could be aware of something. Like, I could kick you on the foot and say, I'm sorry, but I'm not accepting the fact that I'm really sorry. you got to accept the fact that these children and adults are on the spectrum. Right. You know, they do need... Uh, you know, some, you know, supervision, they need, you sure. know, 
you know, to, you know, you have to walk them through things. Like, you know, we do sports programs on the weekend with the kids. Yeah, explain that. This is the play for autism. Play for autism. Basically, you know, we <clears throat> we have a variation of programs ranging from sports. We uh, we have a martial arts club. We have a uh, gymnastics club. We have a laser bounce club. Um, we have a creative fitness club. We take kids to the New York Islander games when they were playing at Barclays. Uh, Brooklyn Nets games. We have a thing we're doing with the Brooklyn Cyclones on June 29th, a fundraiser with them. Uh, you know, it's, just, it's, again, it's about inclusion. It's about yes. getting the kids Two in. programs. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Martial arts and kickboxing. Right. Okay, now, to me, this is a physical type thing. You're not kickboxing with each other. They're kickboxing. It's just for, it's for discipline. Martial arts, <coughs> as we all know, is a discipline. It's a discipline art. But Taekwondo, you know, they teach the kids how, you know, you know, take, you know, communicate, work communication skills with the, you know, instructors, coaches, and then they're not teaching them to go out there and protect themselves. I mean, right. You know, that's what mar you know, martial arts is not about that, but you right. know, it does happen. But, you know, it's teaching them the discipline. It, you know, teaches them like their learning skills, their listening skills, how to uh, adapt. Um, a lot of the programs we do, it's not just with children on the spectrum or adults. We have kids coming from the neighborhood that are volunteers as young as nine, ten. They go out there and play a game, you know, play games like basketball, soccer with the kids. But it's not about winning; it's about right. having fun. To give the kids the confidence, so when they they're at school or they're in the playground, they don't have to be sitting there like this, playing with their thumbs or being right. scared to go out they there. Join in. Yeah, they could go in there, shoot <clears throat> a basketball and stuff like that. We don't overwhelm the kids with the programs in terms of like the sports. We don't go out there and play like two hours of hockey or yeah. basketball. We go like twenty minutes here, thirty minutes there. But it's to get them involved, teach them the basics, and if they want to it's go. It's 19 minutes more than Pat's done this week. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 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 rewarding. I've been doing this, you know, gone on. We're in Queens now since uh, 2012 after Hurricane well, Sandy. Yeah. I settled in Queens, and you know the funny thing is, I was in Arizona with my nephew, and I came back to New York, and we were going to do a thing with the Islanders, and of course the NHL was on strike then. <laughs> you know, so it was kind of like yeah. you know they're calling me up, and I'm like, what do you think? I look stupid. I'm going to do something again with you when you guys screwed me. I'm like, right, I, right. Like, I agree. A lot of money. Right. Pass. So we let, you know, we let it go. And, you know, Hurricane Sandy hit. I was in Far Rockaway. And I was like, you know, I'm originally from Queens, Jackson Heights, but I grew up in New Rochelle and not far from where the shark was seen in Greenwich. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you know, I got stuck in Queens College. It's and a 10-foot like, great white, by the way. Is that what it was? A little bit, like a little nine feet, actually. Nine feet? Yeah. yeah. Google. Maybe he was... Ex <laughs> uh, I, don't want to go. I didn't want to go there. Good. And uh, you know, so that, you know, you know, I was coming back to New York. You know, it was it was, you know, where I wanted to be. But you know, being stuck out here, not knowing where to go, I got you know stuck in uh, Queens College, and they shipped me off to a hotel in Midtown, and that's where I met my wife Helena, who's the vice president of the foundation. Does you know she does a lot of work. Right. And you know <clears> she's probably watching this, but you know everybody asks you know how did you guys you know you know come to you know meet you know we met in front of the nhl store which we got married a year later and you know i had to do a live radio show with uh he's gonna kill me if he's watching this uh talk of new york sports uh mm -hmm. donahue and you know it was you know you had to have a landline so i said can i come over to your place and that and i always joked that i never could leave the apartment after that because she locked me from inside she, from the she outside is, she is watching she yeah. said that's my awesome husband oh my Very god best, yeah. that, that's not my wife it's got to be yours yes that's oh, wow. uh, helena leah Vasacek. Vasacek, yeah. Oh boy. Did you say that's the chick? Or, oh. Vasacek? No. Oh, Vasacek. I said that's the chick. <laughs> Do you no, try I, to steer, it, steer um, <clears throat> kids in a program to, more towards, like, I mean, towards activities, obviously? Because I know, like, um, gaming's such a big thing these days, you know, and like you said, with the. With the yeah, I mean, the kids, house. it's to get them outside, because the, yeah. the big thing is, and, you know, Bonnie will probably say, a lot of these kids just want to sit in front of the TV. Yeah. They want to sit playing PlayStation for 10, 15 hours a day. It's all kids, right? You know, and they're getting, they're, they're, they're bringing themselves into their own shell. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's my opinion. I, I'll be honest with you. I think all the kids nowadays is too much, too no, much in front yeah. of the TV. It's crazy. When we were kids, we'd be playing, like you say, hockey. we playing hockey in the street. we play playing in a tennis court. We're playing, we play it. Yeah. We always found a place to play sports. Yeah, like, we'd have, you know, we'd have our little, you know, like you have gangs these days. You know, we had <sighs> gangs back in the day where we had, like, you know, apartment complex in the Rochelle, like, you know, Faymore versus, like, Harbor House, you know, baseball, hockey, like that. Yeah. But with the kids, you know what it is? It's all about, you know, our thing is putting the kids into action. It's giving them something to do. You know, we do a laser. Right. You know, we do things where they might not be able to go to a baseball game or a hockey game, 
But at the same time, like we do a thing at Laser Bounce in, in, in Glendale. Right, they have right. one out here on the island. And it's great. You know, the kids could go out there, and they're not overwhelmed because that's a big thing. They can get overwhelmed Have with you crowds. met some of the children or, or the kids a, a lot and noticed a change in anything? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I could, you know, parents don't see it, but I can see a change yeah. all the time. Like little things, like some of the kids we got coming out, they were shy. They just wanted to grab a basketball and just sit on the side. And over the time as it went on, that you could see the kids, you know, developing, like, their social skills. Like, yeah. you know, I have one kid, Danny. And a lot of these kids, when I started, were like this, you know, and they're, they're right, taller right, than right, me, right. you know. And, you know, he's greeting the kids. And, or you get these kids that they look forward. It's a repetition thing, too. Yeah, the kids sure. get into that repetition. Routine. And they, you know, they're out there every week. And, they're, you know, they're like, oh, this is awesome. You know, I mean, we do, a, you know, the sports program every Saturday. And if it rains, you know, I get disappointed because, you know, I'm a 56-year-old guy running around with these kids. And sometimes I go on the playground with them. We do a lot of interactive things like, That's uh, great. you know, with water balloons. We play water balloon baseball. I put yeah. them on the ground to teach them to, you know, pass the basketball. You know, street hockey. When I first started, I was getting everybody a street hockey stick, and the parents were like, "Well, you're nuts. The kids are playing <laughs> hockey in the kitchen now." Yeah, and I yeah. was like, "That's what I used to do." Yeah, sure. But, in the know, basement. I used to play in the basement. It's, yeah. it's 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 you know it's very rewarding. I have to admit that. Well, it's, it's you know. great. Really is great. Yeah, it's nice. You got any other questions for Greg? Will we? Well, I mean. I was saying, like, because, I mean, I, I have some knowledge of this, you know, for family, and um, I, I think the, a, a big challenge, getting back to what I said before, is is this generation of kids, maybe the previous one as well, yeah, to an extent, is uh, so geared towards, you know, electronics, electronics that yes. it's it's a chore to get any kid yes. out to do stuff, you know? And, um, I mean, when you... Uh, now, are there, is there an integration when they when they're out, or is it more just them together? No, we. Uh, it's, we my big thing is inclusion, and a lot of that's going on now. Yeah. Is uh, you know when we do like <clears throat> a sports program outside, you know when you get you know you're in a park out outdoors, like yeah. you know you know kids are attracted to sports equipment. Sure. You know they see us, so they come over, and you know I'll explain to them this is what we're doing. It's not it's not about who's winning or losing. It's about right. having fun, right? And we were doing a program over in Middle Village <coughs> years ago, and we had. You know, nine, ten-year-old kids coming out playing, you know, street hockey, basketball with the kids. And the most amazing part was the one kid that came out and the kid were in the same class. They never spoke. Oh, wow. After one or two at school, sessions. Yeah. At school. Yeah. After a couple of sessions together, they became very good friends. That's and nice. it's that, you know, like that old saying, I told two friends and so on and so no, on. That wouldn't happen. And the next thing you know is like, I'm friends with him and his friend is right. with him. So. It gives it breaks the ice. It's it's you know it's about social interaction. It's about you know building their self esteem. Um, you know it's not I'm not out there to get the next uh, Wayne Gretzky or no, LeBron James. No. All it's, right, you know what? It's a big thing is to see a smile on a kid's face. No, you, you, you it's know, you great. See that. It's great. Um, I want to bring Bonnie out here. Um, thank you for coming out. Number one, great, uh, it's great, great what work, you're doing. Great work it you really do. is. Um, I appreciate you guys having me out here. It was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, right. I hope people By the beautiful will... Mass, Massapequa train station. By the, by the beautiful <laughs> Massapequa train station. Only the best. Thanks, Greg. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, brother. Okay. Let's go to MCM duck cleaning. And we'll bring, uh, once it goes up on the screen, Bonnie will sneak in with the boys. Okay. And I will read MCM. Where do you want the boys? Uh, we'll put the three right here. Steve, you want to move down one seat? Now move down one, one seat. Okay. Yeah. Established in 2003, MCM duck cleaning. Good is job, the end result thanks. of many years of research, continuing education and determination with a background in HVAC systems and working for an HVAC company for over 13 years, Matty Nichols realized the need to provide a better, uh, cleaner and safer environment, not only for his own family, but for the families of the community. <clears throat> MCM has now expanded to both Suffolk and Nassau, provides residential and commercial services. The girl is to be the number one source. Call Matty, 631-885-5736. Like I mentioned before, they're also sterilizing ambulances now for volley companies, and I guess for paid companies. Um, they do great work. MCM Duck Cleaning, give them a call. We are here. Hello, gentlemen. So we have Bonnie Scalisi here with Jason and Brandon. Uh, Josh. 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 Yeah. I knew I'd mess it up. That's okay. Josh and Brandon. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Good. Um, so, Bonnie. Thank you for coming in with the boys. I'm oh, sure it was a pleasure. bit of a, uh, you know, By the way, uh, sure. is Phony Soprano coming back, or is he done? Phony, right? well, he's supposed to be sitting there on the off mic, but, you know, oh, okay. that's all right. All right. Um, do we need to move over a little? So, Bonnie, tell us, um, I, I don't even know how to get started here. 
Um, when did you start to to get overwhelmed with with this, or did you ever get overwhelmed with? This? I think every parent, when their child is first diagnosed, right. is is basically devastated. Of course, it's like a like a death. Right. And so. Um, that's the hardest part is when you find out your child is not normal. Right. Typical, whatever right, you want to right. call it. Right. Right. Um, because you have dreams for that child. Everybody does. When you know that your child could be the president, your child could be this. Right. So I think the most devastating part is the beginning. Sure. The the parents that are just finding out the diagnosis, and there's a lot of denial going on. Was up that immediate? That Was that immediate? No, it's usually like. Well, in your it, case. Um. Ballpark, well, you know I, mean? I, I think Josh was diagnosed when he was about two and a half. Okay. And Brandon, one and a half. Okay. And, you know, when they're babies, right. everybody is like, the doctors are like, oh, you know, they're just taking their time. Right, like, Nobody right. wants to put that label on it. Right. But you have to start working with the kids as soon as possible for the best results. The right. earlier, the better. So a lot of parents overlook the symptoms and they're, they're pretty clear symptoms yeah you know, you know no eye contact um, no you give them a gift and they don't care that they're right, getting right, a gift right, right, right. I mean I would see kids much younger than than them running circles around them right and I'm like you know it, it's very hard to take sure when you first find sure. out so that was the, the most difficult and then we had a, we had to hear it twice which yeah. you know it's devastating enough when you hear it once and then to hear it twice uh, I think my, my father, the second time, he, he uh, was closing the garage door and he closed it on his finger. I mean, like, it was like he was so devastated when, we, when mm -hmm. he heard he wasn't thinking. Right, right. Um, because it's bad enough it happens once and then it happens again. Sure. Like, what, are the, what are the chances? <laughs> right. Any history in the family? Yes. Uh, but th th this is an interesting story is um, I have a brother who's autistic. Okay. So when Josh was born and he was diagnosed as autistic, my husband and I went to a genetic counselor, and the genetic counselor said, if you already have one, it's 50-50 shot, you're going to have another one. And there's no, wow. there was no autism on my husband's side. Right. So back mm -hmm. then, this, none of this was covered under insurance. We, did, we went to the genetic counselor, and we did in vitro with a donor egg. Okay. So the donor egg um, was not mine, obviously. It was from another woman. Right. And my husband didn't want to adopt children, so it was his sperm. Right. And then they put it inside me. Right. There, there were three of them, three eggs. And I'm like, I'm not infertile. Like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have an infertility problem. Right. I, we just want to prevent <laughs> autism. Right. So they're like, well, this is our policy. It's only 20% chance that any <coughs> of the eggs. Bless you. Will, bless you. Any of the eggs will take. <coughs> bless you. And they put the three in. They said that's their thing. So I, so I became pregnant with triplets, oh my God. triplets, and, wow. and I did not want to have a high-risk pregnancy. The right. whole idea of going through this was to have one normal uh, child. Correct. So you know, as controversial as it is, I had the uh, pregnancy reduced to twins. Okay. So Josh, uh, Brandon was born with his sister, who's uh, uh, at college. They're 20 now. They boy-girl twins, and mm -hmm. she's typical. She's fine. And he, at one and a half, started showing signs of autism. Wow. And we're like, how could this be? How could this right. be? So I had a maternity test done. A maternity test, not a paternity test. Okay. Because he did look a lot like me when he was born. And we thought maybe something went wrong. And maybe, right. maybe he's really my genetic child. But the maternity test came back that he's, he's not wow. biologically mine. Wow, that is an interesting mine. story, yeah. yeah. And then more controversial is that right after he got the MMR, that's when... He had eye contact and he had some words, and then like a couple of days after he got that MMR, he he stopped looking, right. he stopped talking. Because there's a lot, of, there's a lot of there's debate a lot of about controversy. That. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, yeah. I, I, can the you clarify something for me? Sure. Um, how did the test come back not related to you, not genetically related to you? Um, well, because uh, they tested Brandon, and Brandon is biologically related to my husband, right. it's his son, right. but he's not my biological son. Because it was a donor. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you, 
You knew that, though, right? Isn't yeah, that no, was that the plan. No, that she knew, but she, <laughs> but she was surprised because, that he was, yeah. Yeah, yeah because he was autistic, like, right. maybe something went wrong. Oh, and, right. you know, oh I got you. Yeah. Okay. And it was, and maybe my egg was fertilized instead of a donor egg. I understand. Yeah, we were trying to make sure it was definitely not. Can I ask, Br Br yeah. Brandon, you want to Brandon, talk Brandon, um, does your mom, how's your mom? She's a nice mom? Yes. Yeah, she's a good mom? What is she, does she cook good? Yes. Yeah, what's your he favorite? He says yes to everything. Well, uh, <laughs> Almost. Brandon, like who's funnier, me, John, or Pat? Pat. Pat. <laughs> Brandon! Hey. Are you saying that because he's got a Met uniform on, Brandon? <laughs> what is it, Brandon, one more question. What is your mom is a good cook, you said, right? Okay, Brandon. Brandon. Mom is a good cook? I love it. What does she make? What's her favorite meal, your favorite meal? It's for a cheeseburger and soda. What Why? is it? French fries, cheeseburger, and soda. I like that, soda. too, buddy. It's called Perfect. McDonald's. Very, uh, <laughs> I like that, too, buddy. He dressed it up there. Good <laughs> choice. Good, <laughs> good choice. Good choice. Thank you, Brandon. Good Thank choice. you. Look at his face. So now, school-wise, uh, how, 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 um, what kind of programs are they in? Brandon, That's out there for Brandon you. is actually about to graduate from Clark High School. Oh, congratulations, Man, Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. So he's in a... Thank you. He's in a special needs... Congratulations to you. <laughs> he's been in that school for 10 years. All right. So and then he's going to transition to a day Steve, lab. Steve had the same... 10 years at this school. <laughs> 10 years at the same yeah, high school. Yeah, same high school. Um, so he's in a... the fire academy for 10 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's in a 12 one, one uh, special program called the REACH program at Clark, and they're, it's an amazing program. And they've been getting him ready. Uh, they take him out into the workforce. He's, he works at different places. He works at Applebee's. He, he cleans down um, gyms, like he w cleans the equipment. And they're getting him ready with ADL skills and work skills, and then he's going to transition to a day hab. And Josh is already in a day hab. Okay. And Josh has less, uh, he, I guess you would call it lower functioning. Right. Say hi, Josh. Hey, Josh. <laughs> you guys like working? You like to go to the jobs? That yes. they, yeah. <laughs> my my nephew, my me nephew. Me too, boy, me too. My nephew works at a uh, Kalahari up in Pennsylvania and he worked at Great Wolf Lodge. And he you know, cleans the tables and, and does all that and uh, you know, some weeks you call and oh they work on you hard. Yeah, Uncle Johnny, they work on me hard. My sister go, they work one day this week, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and you have to work only a certain number of hours. They're very careful about that. Okay. Yeah. But um my brother also when he first started he, they, he was working in a supermarket, and he would get the carts when the people were done with them and bring them back, put them, you know. So he's very high-functioning, my brother. So and he wanted to do a good job. So he would follow the women out, and they would be loading the things into their trunk, and he'd be like this, like waiting to get the cart. <laughs> <laughs> and he was scaring the women. Uh, so they're like, Danny, you're doing a good job, but, but we're going to bring you inside. And, and now he wraps um, cellophane around the... the uh, the fruits and the vegetables, sure, and yeah. he's doing really well there. Yeah. And by the way, I'm, I'm going to be, um, we just had a lawyer, I'm going to be my brother's guardian. Okay. My father is, How old is your brother? 90. Um, he's 54. 54. Yeah, so he's uh, he's, st he's high functioning, but he's still Where does he care. live, your brother? He is lives he, in Deer Park in a group, group home. setting? A group home, <coughs> a group home. yeah. Now and you were a kindergarten teacher. Yes. I was For how many years? 32 years. 32 years. So I'm um, doing the math. So uh, uh, Josh is 25. Yes. 25. And Brandon is 20. He's going to be 21 July 30th. Okay. So now, how was that? W were you working full time? You went back to work full time. How long after? Oh my God! I worked full time, and I, I the only time I took off was when Josh was um, when I was pregnant with Josh. I took off uh, before I had him because I had so many sick days built up. Mm -hmm. And the, the system is all crazy. You have to use up your sick days right. before you could you go on maternity leave. So that was really, I think I, he was born in January. I took a month and a half off before that. And then they give you six weeks after that. And then uh, the twins were born in the summer. So I had them in the summer, July 30th. And then I was back at work day one. And neither of them were, were sleeping through the night. I would have to get up. That's bottle, bottle feed, I didn't breastfeed, bottle feed both babies and then get up at 5 o'clock and Oof. go to work with five-year-olds all day Oof. and get the lesson plans and I don't know how I did And who was with them know. during the day? They were, at, they were, I had a babysitter that was with them because I left at 6.30 every morning. Oh, the babysitter would come in. It was like so much of my salary went to the babysitter. Yeah. And then 
you know, when, when they were school age, they went to school, but the babysitter would stay with them when they were, you know, all day. I had an all-day babysitter, which cost a fortune. Mm. And, you know, we did That's it. That's got one of them, too, now. I mean, you know, <laughs> somebody's got to watch out for them. Uh, you know, that, it, it, says, it says a lot about you, too. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough life. Yeah, it was, you know? it was very tough. And, you know, now I'm waiting for, like, on a list with thousands of other people in Nassau County, Suffolk County, and Queens, because they're old enough to be in a group home. But there's mm. no group homes. In there's, Long Island or? Uh, on, yeah. I, I take, take Long Island, Suffolk County, Nassau County, Queens. Yeah. There, there's nothing. There's, like, a years-long waiting yeah. list. So we're on the list. I mean, Josh is on the list. Brandon's not even on the list because they switched everything. It used to be a list, and I put them on really early, and then they changed everything to a first-come, first-needs policy, mm -hmm. like the hospital. Are these privately? No, they're government. They're, they're government, government? Okay. And, they, and they're very expensive. Yeah. So, for instance, if I want my kids in there, yeah. but there's another uh, couple who are in their 80s, yeah. right. and you know they are on the list. Right. Even though I've been on the list longer. They're going to get this. Need, they're right. going to get it because of the need, yeah. which I understand. But I just wish they would just build more. Yeah, yeah I'm surprised yeah. that they, it's le at least not in the plans to build more, just because it's a lot more prevalent than it was. At least, at least they're uh, not really. News -wise, you yeah, know, they're I, not really. Um, yeah, I'm surprised paying that. I, like they know that they need to, but they don't really know what to do because yeah. it's so expensive. Yeah. And they're just band-aiding it. They're, they're giving parents um, like the ability to design their own child's program, and they want the parents to keep them as much as possible yeah. because sure. it's the least, uh, yeah. you know, it's the most financially sound yeah. thing to do. Sure. And of course, the parents always give them the best care. Hey, Brandon. Yes, that's true. Brandon, <laughs> do you have uh, uh, do you have any music you like to listen to? Do you do you have a favorite band or anything like that? Music? Who? He has TV shows he likes. TV shows? The what? Rain Kingdom. What's your favorite TV show? The Rain Came Down. What is it? The what? The Rain Came Down. Oh, his favorite song is The Rain Came Down. Oh, the Rain, the came, rain down. came Down. Yeah. Okay. Who, Who sings that? The Rain Came Down. That? You know? I, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. And TV shows? You watch TV at all? Yes. Which program is your favorite? A1. No, no. You tell a TV show. What, TV show. What TV show do you like? Why well, Happy Song. Do you like Barney? Do you like what? Like what t TV show do you like? The Muppets. The Muppets. He oh. loves Muppets. the Muppets. Oh my God, one of my favorites. You know, when we were when we were kids, <laughs> when we were younger, the Muppets has been around a long time. But yeah. Yeah. Sure. Do they still have? Uh, who are the Muppets? Do they still have those two guys? Is it Cookie Monster a Muppet? No, he loves Sesame Street too. That's that. Cookie Monster left. He's still on Sesame Street. Oh, he's on Sesame Street. He's not a Muppet. You're right, he's not a Muppet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> but he loves Sesame Street, Oh, too. you know all the Muppets. Look at him. He's, <laughs> looking, at me like, my he's looking at me like I'm an idiot. He's dressed <laughs> like the Cookie Monster today. <laughs> oh, we can't talk off camera there. Um, okay, thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Good shows, good music. Good shows. Yeah, good job. Um, so what else? What else? So now uh, you're looking to get them into that program. What kind of program are they in now again? Um, Brandon's finishing up high school, right? And Josh is in um, CUSAC in Melville. It's a day hab program. And what do they actually do there? They they do a bunch of volunteer work. They they also work like we were talking about in uh, restaurants. And you have to pay for that program? No, that, no, that okay. that is paid for by okay. the government. So the day program, and then I also have them in after school programs too. So um, they go straight from the day hab to the after school. So I have my day free now, right? Where you know, which is well, a big deal for me. I, I would sure. say you, you're I'm sure you're entitled <laughs> because you've had years of having you know, no time. You to love myself. you love those boys, but you need to have some time to yourself, and yes. that's and, great. That, and programs like Greg's right. program, you know, and and the after school programs that they have, really keep the parents sane. Yes. I mean, I'm kind of not sane. No, we know no. that. We know that. <laughs> you're, you're, I'm you kind of off my rock You're a comic. Lately. It goes P you're a comic. PTS, yeah. what is that? P P T P Post traumatic stress yes. syndrome? Yes. Yes. I, I really, uh, <laughs> sure. you know, I have that. Don't worry, Bonnie. Yeah. You're saying when you're hanging out with us. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's like once you retire and you have a little time, it's kind of like you're in the war and you get out of the war. Right. Mm -hmm. You you kind of go a little crazy. Sure. I'm, going, on, I'm going a little crazy. You were right on now. cruise control for years yes. mentally. Yes. Yeah. So how, how long have you been not teaching again? 
Uh, it's been a little, about two years. Yeah, so it's, so not, it's not that long. It's yeah. not that what long. What was that vacation you went on to Florida? What was that deal? That, that was what, pretty cool, Yeah, right? that was cool, but um, I'm not, I don't, it's a lot to prepare for. It's awesome, yeah. but it's like so exhausting to get all the things that they need ready, the paperwork, the medicines, the, the clothes, but I did g get to go away uh, from, it was called East End Disabilities. Okay, I've heard of them. And they, yes. they will, they, you know, they're ready to watch them again. I just... I'm not ready to. What get is that called again? That, what, what, no, what? Overnight respite. Yes, thank you, Bonnie. Yeah. Thank you. Overnight respite. <laughs> so they'll take them for a few days yes. to give the parents basically a break. Yes, and some people, some parents don't even go away. They just give them to them, and you know, they can go into the city or they could go, you know. Yeah, right, right. Sometimes you just need a few hours. Oh yeah, right. A few Absolutely. hours. You know. Absolutely. Go, you know, go do a little comedy or something, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. The comedy is has been uh, you sure. know, very great therapy yeah. for you, great sure. therapy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a, a, a few jokes about autism that are a little controversial. <laughs> so I have them in my routine. It's all right. Well, you know, it's like, you, know <laughs> you, you got to allow the yeah, you you better write. I'm one of the few people who, like, if they come up to me after this show, right. I can, like, say, well, I have two autistic kids. Yeah. So don't, I you say say that, that. don't you say that before you deliver the joke? I do. I do. I talk yeah. about my... Yeah, I can avoid that. Yeah. Hey, what are you talking Yeah. But sometimes they don't listen, you yeah. know. Yeah. They course. listen to the second part, but not right, the first right. part. Right. They're, they're like getting their drink order or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we all know how, how that goes. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, they're really... Uh, they're very well behaved. Very well behaved. Yeah. Very, good, very good boys. Yeah. Sports yeah. fans? Are they sports fans? They, watch they like to no. watch any sports? No? <laughs> Josh, you could put on CNN or you yeah. could put on... Uh, the Met game. The Met game. Same he reactions. He could care less. Yeah. Brandon cares. Brandon wants to watch his shows. Right. Sesame Street, Barney. Um, the Muppets. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Any any physical games that they play? Any anything that um, you know? Shoots and ladders and stuff and stuff like that. Or you know, at the programs, they do they they try to involve them, but a lot of times they're so tired when they come home yeah. uh, from back from school that they'll try to get them to do something. It, you know, yeah, even nice. a walk. Like Josh yeah. doesn't even want to go on a walk. Mm. Yeah. You know, wh whatever. It, but um, yeah, they they play games with them, and I throw a ball with them. They, you know, Brandon likes to play ball. Josh, yeah. Josh just takes the ball. Are you guys gamers? Down. Are you gamers? They play any games. You guys so like the video games? video games? I guess. Brandon has phones? a Kindle, and he a plays Kindle? games on the Kindle. Yeah. Yeah. What games do you like on the Kindle, Brandon? Can you tell Brandon, me one? What games do you like on the Kindle? Maybe. Go, go, Thomas. It's, it's like a train thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Thomas, Thomas the train? And, and he yeah, also sure. does word searches on there. Yeah. Like he can find words. Sure. And Brandon can type and Brandon can read. And, you know, he has, mm -hmm. a, he has a computer and he's, he's better on it than I am. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and he types fast. Well, what can I see? I that's not saying much, Bonnie, that he's better on it than you are. <laughs> I know. You're like me. I know. <laughs> I, I'm technologically challenged. Yeah. I'm working on it. That's I'm great. working on it. Well, I, I thank you for bringing the boys in. Thank you for having us. Of course. Uh, Brent, you want to say anything else? Yes. Yes? If to anybody that's watching? Yes. Any of your friends? You have any friends? Yes. What's their name? Alexis. Oh, wait. He, Alexis? Alexis is his sister. But, oh, he, but okay. Brandon is going to the prom with, right, with Ava. Awesome. And, and he loves Ava. Ava's like his favorite person. Oh, it's a girl nice. in his class. Have fun at the prom. Good man, Brandon. With Ava. Be fun. Say thank you. So then you, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Have fun, buddy. Yeah, I'm gonna take a lot of pictures. I've, uh, I gotta go out and buy him a tux. Sure. I mean, not buy him. Rent. You can rent. Rent a, tux. Him, rent a tux. You know, what I wanted to ask you your yeah. daughter now. I saw she's going to school in Canada. Uh, Buffalo. She was. Buff I thought yeah. she was in Canada. All she right. was in Canada because you it's, you can drink over there. It's 18. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so okay. They, they have their parties in Canada. Oh, uh, she goes to <laughs> Buffalo. Don't worry, she's not. Drunk. Buffalo University. All right, she's doing well. She's doing well. Yeah. yeah. She's coming back Thursday. Yeah. So your daughter came she back. She came already. back well, she, Thursday. She, she yeah. stayed to hang out with her friends. Okay. Because she lives off campus, so she pays the rent. We pay. What the year rent. is she in? What year? Um, she's finishing up her third year. She's going to her. Does she know okay. about compost? Because that's very <laughs> big these days. My daughter is so into this environmental <laughs> stuff. It's so funny. Livy's doing. She's actually job. going for a speech pathology and um, health and human resources. Very and nice. she during the summer she works at the JCC with uh, the handicapped population. Oh, that's great. Yeah, she, because of her brothers, she, mm. she's very interested that's in great. Yeah. She yeah. sounds like a good kid. Good. She, she's, she's wonderful. She's really great. She loves, she loves her brother. She loves Brandon more. But, <laughs> <laughs> but she, she's, uh, she's, she's a She's always that. Any siblings, yeah. you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's great. All right. Well, thank you, for, thank Greg, you. for coming out tonight. Thanks, guys. Uh, play yeah. for Autism. See how I remembered that? I read his shirt. <laughs> Body Scalisi with Jason and Brandon. And Josh. Josh. <laughs> Josh and Brandon. He didn't have it on his shirt. Yeah, he didn't have it on his shirt. <laughs> That's right. And Patty, and thanks for John Santo for watching and not being here. Was the the next time you come back. You know, hands. Yeah, about the uh, yeah. the funniest? Maybe we we'll the stands. Yeah, yeah. 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 Candy. Yeah. Yeah. Love on a stick. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We're going to have a massive pink with Dinah. Let's trickle the lips. Yeah, play play ball. ball. Play ball. Roll up the bases and smack it right over the wall. Play ball. Play ball Take off the caps Time for the song